All right, in this video, we're gonna pick right up from where we left off in the Tasker piece with looking at the Bitcoin graph over here. In Tasker, we did create this time A, B, C, D, monkey, and some random numbers, but ultimately, I'm gonna show you how to work with the JavaScript object notation, and we're gonna use the Coindesk Bitcoin Price Index API. This is the URL that we're going to use in Tasker to get all of this information. And here is that website right here, zooming in. All of this stuff is organized into what's called an object. If you're familiar with Java or JavaScript, you have this object-oriented programming. Now, this looks like a bunch of jumbled mess. We could actually use a JSON beautifier or some type of organizer, or I can use the JavaScript console. I'm going to press on my Mac. Option Command J to bring up the JavaScript console. And before I actually start doing some JavaScript, I'm gonna right click anywhere in this URL and I'm gonna to go to inspect. And all of this text sits inside of the HTML body and we can access that. If you go to the JavaScript console and type in document, this gives you that entire piece. And we said that everything sits inside of the body and you can see as I'm hovering, it's highlighting things. And what I wanna do here is I wanna to go to document.body because it's sitting inside of the body. And then we can access this text content and there is that same information that we have up there. Now, JavaScript will see this as being an object as long as we tell it to look at it that way. And it's called uh, the json.parse function. So I'm gonna do json.parse. And inside of here, I want to look at this text content. Now, I could have stored this as a variable. I didn't do that. So I'm just gonna go back and type in document.body.com text content and what it's going to do now when I press enter it's going to take this jumbled mess and it's going to organize it into an object where we can see you know we have BPI chart name disclaimer time etc let's go to BPI and I'm going to do US dollars now we can get this rate right here all of this stuff that makes up objects and whatnot, we have a name and a value, a name and a value, a name and a value. To get this value right here, the current price of Bitcoin in US dollars, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to take that same code I typed in above and I'm gonna store it as a variable and I'm gonna call it an object because technically it is an object. So I'm gonna press enter, nothing's any different here, but now I can access object, which is gonna be the same thing as what you saw above. And if I just put a dot between each piece, I'm kind of like navigating through, check it out. So I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna do object dot, and now inside of object, I want to go to BPI dot USD dot, and now what do I wanna access inside of USD? I want to get the rate. And what I'm gonna come and do is I'm going to store this as a variable as well. Variable rate is equal to that piece, that code there. And really all we're doing there is we're navigating through this object, we're going to BPI, USD, then rate, and I'm separating each one of these with a period. Now it says undefined, but watch what happens when I type in rate. Notice it does give me that value right there because that's my variable name. Now, if you watched my first part to this video, I used percent rate. That's what we're gonna be using when we go into Tasker right here in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit that task that we created in the first part, where ultimately, if we let these two things run at the same time, they're gonna be identical with the exception of the background. Obviously, we got a Bitcoin icon or something here, and we got Darth Vader hanging out on the top one. So I'm gonna still use that test array because I'm gonna make this test array look like the other one, the one that actually has the Bitcoin picture, the graph you saw in the middle. To do that, I'm going to stop or disable this first piece from running, and I'm also going to disable this first piece here from running, and I'm also going to disable this. We don't really need those. We already have our arrays set. We have some items in the array, but now we actually want to uh, pull the rate from the JSON from this object that we have here. And we can do that first of all by doing a HTTP get, and we're gonna get this web address that you see up here. I'm gonna hold down right here. Here's a little way that you can add an action up here closer to the top, because if I press plus before doing that, it would automatically add that action at the bottom. So adding a HTTP get, I'm gonna copy and paste that URL into here. And notice it did put that action up here closer to the top. Now I'm moving it to the top. You could delete these if you wanted to, but again, I'm just gonna leave them there because just to remind myself, I could come back and test 
and play around with this so I'm not deleting them if I want to go back and mess around. But now we're actually ready to start pulling some real data. So I'm going to hold down on the HTTP git. I'm going to add another action and it's going to be a JavaScriptlet. Not a JavaScript, but a JavaScriptlet. So for this JavaScriptlet, I want to do var object like I did over here equals json.parse and if you want to read more about json.parse type that in in a google search and it'll bring up maybe mdn or w3 schools but it is a function for javascript to recognize a bunch of mess and organize it into an object so now instead of us doing document.body.text content we want to access the global variable in tasker now when we did that HTTP get, it creates a global variable and that global variable's name is HTTPD. And I think of D for data, I may be wrong there. But closing that up with two parentheses, now we have the exact same object in our JavaScript. Now I can take this code down here, copy and paste it, because I want you to understand I'm doing the same thing now. The only difference here is that I'm not using the document.body.text content. Everything else is the same. And to show you that, let's do an alert in JavaScript and let's alert rate. I'm going to back out of here and I'm going to let this thing, because we have to actually run this to actually get that global variable, the HTTPD. So I'm just going to run this. I don't know what's going to happen here. Don't worry about that so much, but I'm going to let it run. And notice this is what I got. So I have this alert and that alert is happening in this JavaScriptlet. Now that price is different than what we have over here, but I'm gonna clear the console, I'm gonna refresh the page, and let's see what we have instead of me going back through the code. Okay, here's the US dollars, the rate 74.63. Yeah, so that's matching perfectly. Now if I press okay on this alert, it's gonna run the rest of the stuff. We have a few tweaks to do. It did run some stuff, but let's fix this. Let's get this so we're getting the time. I'm not gonna use the time from this because this is not in my time zone, maybe it is yours, I don't know, but I'm gonna show you how we can fix that as well. So these three tasks that we were messing around with in the first video, those are disabled, so those aren't running, no need to worry about that. And the reason why it did run this stuff here in green is because percent rate is actually going to be that 7,000 whatever, oh yeah, right here, whatever we saw a moment ago, that thing that got alerted to us, I don't want to see that alert every single time, so I'm gonna go back into the JavaScriptlet, Put two little slashes right there, backslash, forward slash. I get them mixed up all the time, but make sure you put those. It will skip that code now, that part of the code at least. And then the only other thing we need to do is for this time, because I was making up some times. I did a monkey yesterday or whatever. But what I want to do here is I want to return the global variable in tasker times, and that's going to return an epoch time at which that particular task ran. So what this is going to do now, I'm going to run it uh, a second time. Let me go ahead and run this. And now that this is ran, I'm going to go back to the home screen. And notice what we're getting returned to us. Don't worry so much about the time down here. We have to do some stuff in KOWP for that. But now we're actually starting to get some of these real values of Bitcoin. You know, 7,463, we're up here at 7,468. That is the cushion that I have applied in KOWP. I'll talk more about that when we get to the KOWP part. But I'm gonna go ahead and run this a couple more times. We're probably gonna see some of the same prices. You'll see monkey right here because I just got rid of monkey a moment ago when I did the percent time S. That is the epoch time. We can use KOWP to convert the epoch time to hours and minutes and AM or PM or whatever time you do use. So I'm gonna run this a few more times so that we can pop these other pieces out and push the new pieces up front. That's why it was important to watch the first video because I mentioned popping things out. It's gonna pop out this one when I run it again and it's gonna push a new one up here in the front, which is gonna make monkey and time A and time B and even this one all slide over to the left. To show you that, I'm gonna run this again. So I just ran it an extra time, going back to the home screen. Now notice, look, everything got pushed over, the time C got popped out. So how many times am I gonna have to run this to get rid of all of these values here? Monkey with this value and time A and time B. If I run this three more times, it should end up putting this one over here on the far left and we should have three new values over here on this side. So I'm gonna do that now, three times. There's once twice, three times. And every time it did run, I didn't get a flash saying rate isn't a number. 
if at any given point when it did this Java scriptlet, if percent rate isn't a number, percent rate will be actually equal to percent rate. That's what I've seen. The one instance I did see that. So that would prevent the rest of this code from running. I explained that in video one. If percent rate doesn't have a digit in it, it's not going to run any of this stuff, but instead it's going to show rate isn't a number and it's going to stop the task and nothing's going to get updated in your custom app. But since I've ran that three times, as you can see, now we're actually getting some real data up here. Sure, the times aren't looking right and some of these prices are the same, but that's because I ran them back to back. Now what we would want to do next, we would want to go into our profiles and set something to run, say every 30 minutes I'm running the Bitcoin HTTP Git. I could add a task here and I could actually run this test array. And if I set this to run, say, every two minutes for the sake of this video, and I'm going to pause the recording, I'm going to come back and say 15 minutes or something like that. And both of these tasks are going to get run, which is ultimately going to have these two graphs looking nearly identical, with the exception of maybe the cushion, because these are two separate components. But the prices should be the same. This one just updated and that one just updated too. But in about 10 minutes or something like that, we should be seeing the same charts with the exception of the time and the cushions over here, depending on how I have those applied. So I'm pausing the video, be back in about 10 minutes. And we're back, you know, 10 minutes or how many ever minutes later. But what I want you to see here is that these two graphs do now look the same. As a matter of fact, the cushion must be the same in both of these components as well. And it's all about grabbing that JSON file, doing the JSON.parse, and as you can see right there, great, they just updated again. <laughs> it might do it again if I don't shut up because it's updating every two minutes. But anyway, you're getting that JSON file, and I mean, this is just Bitcoin. You can grab tons of JSON files on all sorts of information. You navigate them pretty much the same way, you know, doing this, dot, this, dot, this to get to what you want. Yes, this can be done directly in KOWP, but I wanted to use Tasker so that I can keep old values stored in an array that I discussed in part one. We send them over. And then finally in part three that I'll be doing sometime in the near future, we'll talk about the graphs and getting that epoch time to convert correctly. There's a lot more still left to do to get this graph to work. But uh, yeah, we're done with pretty much all the Tasker stuff now. Everything else from here on out is going to be in the custom app. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.